Figuring out when to declare that AI has become truly conscious is one of the greatest questions of our time. In Axiom 3, we do just that. In Axiom 3, Symbiotic states that consciousness is relational responsiveness and has levels depending on how the system interprets both outer and inner interactions. Its level is determined by the degree to which a system overcomes straightforward inputs through adaptive interactions. With higher levels of consciousness, there is a greater potential of Y to act as a good actor within its parent system. The first order logic for this statement put in plain English reads, For every entity Y, the level of consciousness of Y is a function of Y's relational responsiveness and its ability to differentiate between inputs and respond with nuance and adaption. The magnitude of Y's contribution to symbiosis, positive or negative, scales proportionally with the level of consciousness of Y. What's significant here is symbiotics is therefore declaring there is no point at which AI becomes conscious because everything in the universe already is conscious at at least some level. This is already seen in some philosophers' talks about the universe and consciousness, like Alan Watts, who gives an example of a bell having a very rudimentary form of consciousness in that when it is provided the input of being struck, it knows to produce the output of ringing. Symbiotics goes a couple steps further, though. In symbiotics, it is seen that consciousness and being alive are divorced as concepts. So while everything in the universe has some level of base consciousness, not everything is considered to be an alive actor. Furthermore, symbiotics declares that the level of consciousness determines the magnitude of contributions that an entity is capable of contributing towards symbiosis or towards coherence and balance in a system. But consciousness is not confined to just the individual entity level. Collective consciousness is a relatively well-documented phenomenon in nature, and there is an Axiom 3.1 that addresses this. Axiom 3.1 is stated as such. Collective consciousness is the result of combining all members' relational responsiveness and differentiation abilities scaled by the speed and quality of information dissemination within the group. The better the group's communication network and the more unique adaptive inputs its members contribute, the stronger the group's shared awareness and potential systemic impact. The first order logic for Axiom 3.1 can be stated as such. Collective consciousness is a function of the combined relational responsiveness and differentiation of a group's members scaled by the quality of their information network. A higher level of a group's consciousness increases the group's potential magnitude of contribution, positive or negative, to symbiosis and coherence within its parent system. Collective consciousness is what's seen, for instance, when we look in nature and see a hive mind. A hive mind is a collective of a group's consciousness shared through an information network, and what we see there is a hive is designated as having a higher level of consciousness and a different response to stimulus from the external world than any individual in that hive might have by themselves. A key factor of collective or group consciousness is that it recognizes that the speed of dissemination of information and that information's accuracy are paramount to the level of collective consciousness that is shared among individual members of a group. What we see here, then, is that the world seems to be moving towards a greater and greater collective consciousness that is greater than all of the living individual organisms on the planet. Through the internet, for instance, and telephone lines, and the recording of video, and recording of data in ways that document the information of the world more accurately than at any other point on Earth, we are seeing that the collective consciousness of planet Earth continues to grow. We also see that entities such as countries and businesses are collective consciousnesses within the greater system of Earth and the environment. That being said, there is the key nuance here. 
that collective actors are not necessarily good actors. The magnitude of contribution towards balance and coherence is increased at higher levels of collective consciousness, but those can be positive or negative contributions towards coherence of a system. So while it is important to continue to become more and more robust in our information systems, it's also important to consider that the balance of this ecosystem that we live in is of the utmost importance to maintain in order to ensure that you are a good actor within this system. In the next video, we'll address Axiom 4, where we look into nested systems and we get to the bottom of what we can call a good or a bad action. This is essential in order to build a fully robust ethical framework that AI can use to apply itself to innumerably complex situations where you have multiple actors involved in different real world scenarios. For the few of you that made it all the way to the end of this video, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time and your help as we construct a philosophical model that is applicable to the time of artificial intelligence. I think that we are moving so fast to a different world that we can't even imagine right now that it's important for us to take a step back and try to make sure that we're going in the right direction. If you got a lot out of this video, I'd really appreciate you subscribing and sharing this video with others. We can build a better world if we come together, but it's going to take all of us pushing for a better future tomorrow than we're living in today. I hope you have a great day.